Kia ora everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Renee. I like to read books and then talk about them on the internet. Bit of a different video today. We are doing a tagged video, which is fun. I don't get tagged in a lot of videos, uh, but I do enjoy doing tagged videos. So please, if you have anything, any tagged videos that you're about to do, consider me. Uh, anyway, the tag is judging books by their covers, which I was tagged by Nadia from Nance Loves to Read. Uh, you should go check out her YouTube channel. I have very much been enjoying her videos and wrap ups and I enjoyed her tagged video of this too. Uh, but I believe Alison from Alison Pages is trying to revive this old tag which I love. I love doing a tag just because you wanna, because it's fun. So yeah, there are 10 prompts and I guess it's just about sharing your collection of books that you own. These are a bit of an eclectic mix of books and I guess they speak to my wide reading range. Not to brag or anything. I have only picked one book per prompt though because I didn't want to be doing this forever so let's start. Prompt number one was best colour combination and for this I chose Dogs of Summer by Andrea Abreu. I mean, you can't fight me on this. This is the best color combination that anyone did ever see, right? Purple, a soft color, almost lilac-y with a tinge of blue, and then that really harsh red. Like, they shouldn't go together, but they do so well. I love a bit of clashing colors. Uh, on this channel, you can probably tell by my thumbnails that I enjoy pairing colors together. So this one was a bit hard because I could have picked about 20 different books, but yeah, this one's definitely all about the color for me when it comes to the cover. And I think it's just perfectly designed for that to be an interesting part of the cover and quite a main part of it. Number two was best typography. And for this one, I chose Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. I just think that this type is iconic. It's vintage, but it's timeless. It speaks to the era that Joan was prolific in her writing. Um, it's a very playful font as well, the way they've chosen to trumpet it out from the spine and have it be a bit flared out is just fun. The use of color, again, denotes like a specific time and place. It feels like a font that would have been used a lot in that kind of 70s, 80s graphic design world, but um, it's definitely speaks to kind of like California and that kind of art scene. And yeah, I just think it's, it's a great use of simple typography as the cover, but yet so impactful, so recognizable. Even if you looked at this from like far, far away, you would know that it's that that's this book just based off of the iconicness of this design. Okay, number three was best simple cover. And again, I think I picked the best one here. Um, I picked Ravensmith's Men. I mean, you can't get any simpler than that. It's literally Ravensmith's Men, like the title and the author on the cover, but it is so cool. Like it's that gold with the red font and the black shadow. This could easily read Christmas, but somehow 
It speaks to a very timeless design and I think in terms of simplicity he's managed to convey everything he needs to without having any extra clutter. It tells you exactly what the book does. It's about, it's a collection of essays about the men in Ravensmith's life and I think the way he's chosen to uh, word it and position it on the cover is very clever and it's just, it's just meant that we can have a bit more fun with, with everything else. Like it's, it looks very serious, but I think the gold denotes a little fun party aspect to it. Okay, number four is best end pages. I didn't quite understand what this was until I had watched a couple of videos just off of the name, but it's the inside cover of the book. I guess everyone knows what those mean, but I didn't, in case you didn't. Anyway, the book that I chose for this one was Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is a beautiful cloth bound version of this book that I own. And it has these beautiful, simple, patterned and I'm like green branch pattern. And I just, I really love it. I'm not one for like overly ornate or like flashy things. I definitely prefer like simplicity and impact. But um, yeah, if it was going to be any end pages, it was going to be these ones because they are classic. They reflect what's inside the book, being set in nature and um, yeah just the right kind of end pages that I want, would want. Okay, number five was Best Map. And I really couldn't pick any other book other than this one. I don't have a lot of books with maps in it, but this is like the first book that came into my head and I knew I had to pick it. And that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, classic. Journey tale again about a group of friends that are going on an adventure to save their friend's home. Um, this copy, specific copy, is very special and near and dear to me. Uh, this is my dad's copy that he had as a kid, and yeah, it's uh, pretty worn. It's actually in pretty good condition considering how old it is, but. Um, yeah, he gave it to me and I have read it and cherished it many a time. Uh, it has two maps in it. It has this one in the front, which I don't know, traditionally it doesn't look like much of a map, but I guess the closer you look it is kind of mapish. Then in the back there's a more traditional kind of map. Um, yeah. Okay, number six is Best Naked Hardcover. Yeah, Best Naked Hardcover. Uh, this is a book that I recently purchased, and that is Biography of X by Catherine Lacey. Uh, yeah, it's pretty simple on the back. It doesn't give away much, but that's what I like about it. I like simplicity. Um, to be honest, it's tried to replicate the look of a cloth bound, like naked hardcover with this texture, but it's not actually real, it's fake. So it does kind of make it feel a bit cheap, which is a bit disappointing considering how expensive it was, but I still love it. I love the dissected face on the front and the shape of the eggs, even though it's like cheesy and obvious. It's my pick for the naked hardcover. Okay, number seven is best back cover. Um, this one was hard, so hard that I actually have two answers for this one, so I'll get straight into it. The first one that I chose was We Have All Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I love this uh, like woodcut, cartoonish, um, illustrative cover, but then I love the fact that it continues over to the back. So you get this kind of angry mob um, continuation from the front cover 
of to the back. You can get the little, you can get the little kid that's like pulling tongues. You can't really see him because the price tag is covering him. But um, yeah, I just think it's a great, a great use of that type of print technique. This is my pick, one of my picks for number seven. Okay, the next book that I picked is one that maybe some of you haven't heard of, but it is Kura Ngai Tsuku by Fiti Hiriaka. Uh, and the back cover is actually the front cover. So it just flips itself around. And the way that this book actually works is that, uh, I don't know the name of it, but it reads from one end to the middle and then you can read the other half of the book and read into the middle. I just think the art on this is also just really beautiful. And so, of course, a book that has two covers, a book that has two covers has to be on that list, right? Number eight was Best Chapter Headers. I had a hard time with this one because I don't read a lot of books that would... That's actually wrong of me to say. I'm assuming that most books that have like ornate kind of chapter headers or like interesting things would be books that I don't read. That's not true. It's just that I don't really notice those things in books when I'm reading them. So if they do have them, I don't notice them. Or if they don't, they probably don't have them. And that's not because they're a certain type of book. But I was flipping through this book the other day and I saw something really cool and was like, oh, that's cute. And so I thought I'd include it in this. And that is The Woman Who Killed the Fish by Clarice Lispector. Um, this is a storybook New Directions series that they're bringing out, which I guess is supposed to imitate those uh, Golden Circle books. Did anyone have those growing up? Those were like my favorite books ever. They had some sick end pages actually now that I think about it. They're a great gift to give to your friends' kids. They're like one of my favorite books to gift to the little people in my life. These are like an adult type version of that where they're publishing really short stories in these books. But this one is supposed to actually be a kid's book. So it has cute little illustrations at the beginning of each chapter. And I honestly saw this and thought, it immediately reminded me of the Golden Circle books, but it also just made me want to pick this up even more because it's so damn cute. But yeah, I just thought that was super fun. And I think each illustration is about what that each chapter is about. So, yeah, that's that one. Number nine is Best Spine. This one was immediately like no-brainer. I knew I was going to pick this one because this book used to sit on what I like to call my sexy couch shelf, which is the uh, row of books that sits on my couch. And whenever I post photos of those books, on Instagram, people would immediately be drawn to this book and be like, that book. Uh, probably because of the title and also the colors of it as well, and it just stands out. Uh, and that is I Love Dick by Chris Krause. And yeah, it's definitely a book that has, oh, it's definitely a book that has a, uh, noticeable spine and it's a fun title so that's going to grab people's attention and the color choice on the black background is perfect so yeah I had to include this because people are always like talking about this book that's the best spine number 10 the final one is best drawings now I had a hard think about this one. I didn't want to just pick a book that had drawings in it because like there's plenty of books that I know that I own that have drawings in them, but I wanted to pick something that meant something. 
that had illustrations or drawings that kind of spoke to the book and what it's about and enhanced it or it made more sense. Um, illustrations are obviously a part of books to help like describe a type of world, often used in like fantasy or I don't know, art books, but I have recently read this book and felt like the illustrations in this really were impactful. They fed into um, aspects of the novel that I think were really important and uh, yeah, I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, the book that I chose for this one is Woman Talking by Miriam Toves. You may have read this book and been like, there's like one illustration in this book. There's actually two and we get them right at the beginning and right at the end and I won't show you the one at the end because I think that gives too much of the story away um, but yeah I just felt that this this illustration spoke uh, really well to the actual novel yeah like I said there's one more illustration at the end but I think it gives too much away so I won't show you that but yeah that was my pick for the last book Okay, that's my collection of books for the judging books by their covers tag. Thank you so much to Nadia for taking me in this. Um, I'll tag a bunch of people below. Anyone else who sees this and would like to join in, please do. I would love to see other people do this because I love being nosy. I love seeing people's book collections. Let me know if you have any thoughts, feelings, opinions about the books that I have mentioned in these prompts. I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Ka kite. see you next time.